So now in this video, we're going to do a quick demonstration of inductive kickback. So inductors, they when they're conducting, they don't want to stop conducting suddenly. They also don't want to start conducting suddenly. We looked at that in the last video. But the danger is when you try to make them stop before they want to. They actually increase voltage to keep conducting. So this isn't a perfectly made circuit. And also what we're going to do here, there's integrated circuit, there's modules that you can buy that actually do a good job of uh, stepping up the voltage. So we have five volts right there. And now I will show you what I mean by stepping up the voltage. So the uh, oscilloscope probes are across this capacitor there. You can see we're slightly below one volt. And there's a lot of resistance, but for this setup, there's not a ton of resistance. But in any case, there you can see we exceeded five volts. We even exceeded eight volts up there. Right now, the capacitor is discharging. It's actually discharging through this oscilloscope. It'd be much better to have an oscilloscope. This has about one million ohms of resistance. There's a lot of them out there that have a lot more resistance. But in any case, the uh, takeaway is clear. We got eight volts there charging the capacitor when we're only using a five volt power supply. So now we took apart the circuit. We're gonna put it back together and I noticed something that made this do worse than it would have been doing otherwise. So that resistor is right next to that jumper there. We actually want to move the resistor so it is to the orange jumper. So we're working with five volts and I want a fair amount of current. So I'm using 150 ohm resistors. All of these resistors are 150 ohms. And then these are providing probably about 25 ohms of resistance also. So they're also helping limit current a little bit. But in any case, 150 ohms. So that one wasn't even connected to the inductor. It wasn't even letting any current go through. Now we're going to add the inductor. So you can see it's going to where the jumper and the resistor is and the other jumper. So now when I close the switch, current will go through the resistor and through the inductor. And then when I let go of the switch, right now it's not connected to anything, but what it's gonna do is when I release it, it's probably gonna make sure current keeps flowing a little bit and there'll be a little spark somewhere inside the switch when I just released it. So in any case, this is a small inductor, probably not damaging, but uh, higher value inductors, higher voltages and currents there's a good chance of uh, sparking. So now we showed that's where it's gonna go. I'm gonna put another resistor parallel to this one. In fact, two more parallel to that one. And so what that's gonna do, it's gonna triple the amount of current going through as far as the resistors are concerned. We're getting, instead of 150 ohms of resistance, this is closer to, uh, what would it be, like 66 or something? Basically, it's about a third of the equivalent resistance, but they'll all be passing current independently and all heating up independently. And now we're gonna take the uh, inductor and add it right there. Now, what we're gonna do is add another resistor over here. And this one, so this one will be parallel. These two rows, or uh, this two bottom pins, I should say, they're always connected together. So now we have four going to this orange jumper right there, which also goes to the top pin of the inductor. And unfortunately, I bent the wire of this resistor. So hopefully it goes in. There we go. All right, we're up there. And we're going to take the other inductor and put it parallel. So two of them will be passing current, and they'll both be kicking back current. So we want to capture this uh, current right now. So first thing we're going to do is take a diode, because we only want it to go one way. We want to charge the capacitor, but not let the capacitor discharge. Unfortunately, it was discharging through the oscilloscope, and uh, but that's my setup, so not much we can do about that. So let's see if I can squeeze that in. So. Yeah, I know how to do this. I'll take that and put it like this here. The LED is less flexible than the capacitor. So, so right there. So up to now, we have a current path going through. 
the resistors and inductors when I close the switch. When I release the switch, the inductors are going to keep current flowing a little bit. There'll probably be a little spark in the switch. Again, not a lot because this is a small setup, but that is what we are looking at. So the capacitor that we are using is only a 2.2 microfarad capacitor. So hopefully you can see that. It says 2.2 and then mu F for microfarad. Small values. So small values for each kickback will charge up faster. And we're going to go to the other side of the LED, so or the uh, inductors. So I got the inductor there, one side, and the current will go through the diode and then through the capacitor. So this side will be more positive. We want to put the longer lead there. Shorter lead we want to put up to the orange jumper right there. And there we have it. And uh, so now we have to attach the oscilloscope. So this side is going to be more negative. And so I got the jumper there. It's connected to the alligator clip. You can see that. So I got the other alligator clip, the uh, red one. We're going to put it to the positive side of the capacitor. And that's all we got to do. We are done wiring it up. And it hovers at about one volt for some reason. The oscilloscope doesn't completely discharge it, but there you can see we went above eight volts right there pretty well. And I think we're doing a lot better because we have, I had at least one of the resistors was not connected properly. So now each square is two volts. Before it was one volt, there's eight squares, and uh, we went off. So now each square is two volts, and there you can see, looks like about 10 volts. So two, four, six, eight, ten 10 uh, maximum right now. And that's with the oscilloscope draining the uh, resistor, uh, capacitor. So there you can see how fast the capacitor drained. What I'm gonna do to uh, prove that the oscilloscope is what's draining it. We'll put it directly to the rail, so it's gonna be five volts. We still have five volts at the power supply right there. I'm gonna pop this over here, and we will disconnect uh, that from the circuit. So put the uh, red one right there, and the blue jumper, the black one. There you can see it did self-discharge a little bit, but it was charged until we added the oscilloscope. So it's pretty clear that it's staying pretty well charged. It took us a little while to get that transferred over until we attach the oscilloscope. So the oscilloscope is what's draining it that quick. It's not just self-discharging that fast over time. Oh yeah, the reason why it's three squares is because we only have that we had that set to two volts per division yeah that was really odd but uh, that's what it was so there we go we went up to five and then it started discharging but from that period between charging it and waiting it will discharge probably a little bit over time but that's a relatively long time compared to what we're dealing with there there you can see it was pretty much uh, spot on 5 volts. But the main takeaway is we were able to boost the voltage higher than our power supply voltage. Again, they make modules that do a really good job. You're like uh, probably 80, 90% efficient. Whereas as you can see here with uh, this setup and especially with this oscilloscope attached, we're, we're losing all that energy that we're doing. So we're really getting a 0% efficiency. None at all. But uh, they make modules that uh, boost voltage. But the main thing is, it's still an interesting component. It can actually create a higher voltage than the power supply. And that's because it's going to move the current however it can. And current is uh, resistance and voltage. And so to move current, you need voltage. And so if it's going to keep voltage going through a resistance or anything, it needs to create a voltage. So hopefully that all made sense. Thanks for watching. Check out one of these other videos that I am posting. Uh, subscribe and uh, click the bell. I will see you in the next video.